Hey guys, today I'm going to show you how to make some steampunk charms like I showed in my last charm update. I'm going to make a two-part video because I'll be ordering some actual gears soon. So this one will be a tutorial with gears made of clay. But the next one will have real small gears and pieces like that. So let's get started. To start off, you'll need three colors of clay or four if you're going to add a little piece like I'm going to. You'll need some silver, some bronze-ish color. Mine's really red, but I made mine using gold, a little bit of red and a little bit of brown. And it doesn't really matter be, like exactly the exact color because you'll be covering it with something later. And then you'll need some gold. And if you're going to do what I'm going to do to this one, you'll need a little bit of red. You'll also need some pigment, and this is optional if you have it, but I think it makes it really metallic and really shine. I have some of the bronze or copper if you say this, whatever color you want to call it, copper, I guess it is, gold, and this stuff I got at Hobby Lobby, it's at like five dollars I think, and it comes with a lot in there, it's really nice stuff. Then you'll need some silver, I didn't buy silver because I had this, it's MAC pigment, so it's actually makeup, but it works just as well. You also need some wire, you'll need a head pin, or an eye pin if you choose so, but I like head pins. And then you'll need two cookie cutters for the shape I'm going to do. You can use any shape. I'm going to do a star and I'm going to use a little one for little accessory pieces. You'll need pliers and wire cutters. An exacto knife or any other kind of blade. And then you'll need some, oops, dropping everything some dotting tools. First you're going to want to take your silver clay and roll it out so it's not super thin but it's not really thick. Okay, so it's like about that thick. I think that should be big enough. Yes it is. And go ahead and cut out the piece. Next I'm going to roll out some of the bronzish color and set that out of the way. And you're going to want this to be relatively thin. You can cut out a piece of the edge of this and you don't need to fit the entire charm and if you do what I just did that's perfectly fine I make these charms up as I go there's really no set pattern to how I do it and place it right on top and just line it up and then make sure it's on there good with your gold clay you're going to want to do the same thing you did with the bronze I'm gonna keep calling it bronze and I should be saying copper Cut out. Another star, and see it's really thin. I want it to line up so it goes straight up like this. So what I'm going to do is first just cut out generally what I need. It's kind of hard to pick it up and get it on there, and then score off what I don't. somewhere in there and just cut down so it comes off right now it's like this and then you want to make sure this stays together now on to a little bit of detailing I'm taking the smallest ball that's not a needle on mine there's some nail polish on it I was using these but a little tiny ball and what you're going to want to do is kind of indent in the lines here a little bit more hard for me to hold it up and do it. And you can put little holes to be like bolts. And you can put them anywhere you want. And then with another ball tool, this in case in this case needle tool, one that's not super sharp, I'm going to draw a line across here just to give it some more like plating look. Now I'm going to take a little bit of wire and add some more details. Just cut off some. But I'm going to make like a coil, a very loose coil. Okay, so here I have my coil. It doesn't look too nice on camera for some reason because it won't focus on it. But I made it so it gets smaller as it goes down. That's just how it turned out. Now I'm going to put it on 
Alright, I pressed down the coil that I had made into piece a uh, part of the charm. And that's just one piece of detailing that you can do. You can also add n other little um, like loops and such. Here I'm adding little pieces that go off the sides and it's just like a little half loop arc and you just push it in and I will make one real quick. What I did here was I just cut out the little star out of a little cookie cutter from the red. And this step is optional if you don't want red or something on it, but I thought it would be cute to add a little piece of a star. It's going to stick off the edge here. My red is really, really soft, so it just like sticks to me constantly. Now I'm going to add a little bit more detailing by adding some like cracks in it to make it look a little bit older. And I'm mostly going to focus on the little star. And you can just use your X-Acto knife for this or a needle tool. I prefer my X-Acto knife because it's a little bit sharper. But you just draw thin lines. See if it'll focus. <laughs> nope. It doesn't like to focus up close. You can draw some thin lines. And again, if there's imperfections, like I have a dent right here, really doesn't matter because it's supposed to look kind of old and worn out. Now that I've added the cracks, we're going to start with the pigment. I'm going to use my silver first, and since it's in such a little container, I put it into like a little cup with a paintbrush to brush it on. And you can pretty much do this like if you were dusting any like thing that was supposed to be baked. On to the next color. For mine, I don't use multiple paint brushes for different colors. I just kind of flick it around and get the silver out as much as I can. Other than that, it doesn't really matter too much. And now for the last step is going to be adding the gears. I'm going to start first with a gold gear. I have a bit bigger of a star cookie cutter here, and I'm going to roll out. Oops, I'm going to roll out my gold again. Just cut right into that, and I'm going to take. I don't have a really tiny circle cookie cutter, which I don't really know why I don't, but I have a little piping tip, and I'm going to press a hole in the center. Probably going to do it another one just so it gets a little bit bigger. And then I have a nice little hole in the center. See if this is good size. No. <laughs> then find a circle that's a good size. I don't know how well you can see that because of the lighting, but it shouldn't cut off all the edges around it. But it should cut off some so it doesn't point it, so it's not pointed. And there we go. There is the first gear. Take some more gold pigment and brush it on. I'm going to put it right on the corner there, not where it fell off my hand. I'm going to put a little dot of glue. Or not glue, wow. Well, um, not a dot, but like kind of like a ring to fit around it. And place it on there. I'm going to make another bronze gear. It's going to be quite a bit smaller than that. <laughs> I'm going to show you the other way that I make gears. You cut out a little circle, and you're going to want to make this smaller because otherwise it's going to be the same size as the other one. And I just keep cutting around because this is the smallest circle cookie cutter that I have. I'm going to make this nice little donut. I'm going to use this a bit bigger one because I like how it has thin pieces. And you're just going to cut in little indents around it. And I don't suggest going all the way around at once. I suggest doing across, just so it makes it easier to space them out evenly. And there's the finished gear. I'm going to put it with the other gear, so like on it. 
As far as tiny gears go, I really hate making them. They're just a pain in the butt. To make a tiny circle, and this is going to be one without a hole in the middle. I need to dust a little bit on this. I just used my finger, so it's so small. And I'm going to put him right down in the bottom corner because it seems a little empty there. Just adding a little bit of TLS. And stick him right on down. Onto the eye pin. You can stick it all the way through like a regular eye pin would. I'm just going to bend it into a head pin. If I had head pins, I'd be using a head pin for this, but I don't. Alright, I added the bottom little loop and I'm going to pop this in the oven and bake it for the time that it says on the package. Alright, now that this is all baked and nice and ready to go, you're going to take the same water and paint mix. For this one I added a bit more water than I did before. I'm just going to want to have toilet paper or something set aside to get to use. For this you're going to want to just Take some of this and brush it everywhere. You want it to be black. Black, black, black. And splatter everywhere like I did. That totally works too. It's actually just going to make a bigger mess. Especially where you put those cracks. That's really where you want it. And then you're just going to dab it off. Alright, now it has given it this like rusted, old looking, I don't know if rusted is maybe the right word, but it looks like it's worn down. When I glaze, I use triple thick now. Alright, here is the charm all finished. I hope you guys liked this tutorial, and if you used it, please, I would love to see if you could post a video response and show me what you made using this tutorial. And remember to check out my Etsy, that'll be down in the description. And if you like my videos, please comment, rate, and subscribe. Bye!